just imagine you get a message from your friend and that's a very beautiful intro message with a button uh probably even some i don't know gif or like some interactive element and then you just click and you access the game and you start playing probably you were invited to take part in a tournament or in a battle in a pvp with your friend um so once again this is all about you know like sharing and involving more and more people so that these apps they really become viral and uh which, which definitely eliminates the need to heavily invest in marketing just because it's very very organic growth the polygon community grants program was launched with 1 billion tokens all for polygon builders Season 1 is live right now and features 35 million in Matic to support the next generation of Polygon products. Builders on Polygon, these grants are for you. Join the aggregated future today by applying at polygon.technology slash grants. Pair is an innovative pair trading exchange built on top of Simio. Users can trade trending narratives with one click from blue chip narratives such as long BTC, short ETH, right to the whiff versus block. The hat stays on. Simio's intense centric architecture enables deep liquidity, source off-chain, and broad on-chain. And combined with Pair, has democratized access to complex trading strategies typically reserved for institutional traders. Avalanche is a smart contract platform that has a novel consensus protocol, subnet infrastructure, and the Hyper SDK toolkit, which allows web-free developers to easily launch custom, powerful blockchain solutions. You can start building today by checking out the link below. Nothing said on Zero X Research is a recommendation to buy or sell securities or tokens. This podcast is for informational purposes only, and any views expressed by anyone on the show are solely our opinions, not financial advice. Boccaccio, Ryan, and our guests may hold positions in the company's funds or projects discussed. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Zero X Research. Uh, I'm joined by Ryan from the BlockWorks Research team and Alina, who's the ecosystem lead at Ton. Thank you so much for joining us, Alina. Thank you so much, guys. I'm really excited to participate. We are as well. Um, before we get started, do you want to give a brief overview of what you guys are building over at Ton? Yeah, sure. So basically, I work at Ton Foundation, as you very correctly mentioned. So I'm ecosystem lead, which means that I'm responsible for making sure every team, every founder, every builder on Ton has all the necessary resources, materials, and programs to succeed and to build something cool and sustainable inside the ecosystem. So working really like a lot with different teams that are basically migrating from somewhere else to Ton right now, because it's really, I think the hottest period for Ton at the moment. Yeah, but generally as Ton Foundation, as a nonprofit organization, uh, our aim is to uh, ensure this favorable, very convenient conditions for just building something great um, inside the the Web3 space and specifically in our ecosystem. That makes sense. And I actually, just to start us off, one of the things that I wonder is how Ton wants to position itself. Like you're a layer one, but is there a specific sector that you want to go for? To me, it feels like onboarding USDT and um, Tether Gold, it feels like you want to become a payments type of network, but I'm wondering like how you guys think about it or is it a free for all? Uh, I mean, generally speaking, of course, it is web free for all, you know, just thinking in the long term. But probably now we are, you're right, focused on payments, of course, with the coming of native USDT to Ton. But then also, I mean, leveraging the potential of Telegram, of course, that's the main narrative, right? 900 million people of monthly active audience, someone needs to onboard them into, into blockchain, into crypto. And th this is basically our intrinsic goal and mission of course so this is why we are specifically focusing on such verticals as like social fi different utility use cases inside telegram DeFi, of course as the well let's say i mean essential element of any web3 ecosystem right but so we're definitely focused on building telegram mini apps specifically with the use of dawn as the web3 infrastructure for them that makes sense and I kind of want to ask a bit about your relationship with Telegram because in the past you've distanced yourselves and then later or earlier this year you uh, like became more associated again, like you almost rec reconciled. I'm wondering like what's the reasoning behind this and how does that work? Yeah, I mean, this is a very important question and I really wanted to clarify it today just because probably mostly for the Western audience, uh, these two things are very, I mean, similar and very I would say even the same, but this is absolutely not true, just because Telegram and Ton Foundation as such are completely like independent entities, right? With 
uh, different missions, let's say, which definitely intersect uh, when it comes to Web3. But like generally speaking, so Tone Foundation, as I already mentioned, is a nonprofit organization that is uh, building this infrastructure, this tooling, these programs for builders and founders uh, inside the Tone ecosystem. And then Telegram is the messenger, right? One of the top messengers in, in the world right now. So um, in September of last year at Token 2049 in Singapore, there was this official announcement uh, from the main stage of this um, strategic official partnership between Telegram and Ton Foundation, which basically means that we've become their like I mean partner uh, as regards the Web three part specifically, right? So once again, keeping it as being two completely independent and separate institutions, entities, but very like tightly collaborating uh, in in the Web three realm specifically. To add on top of that, we saw the uh, appearance of Wallet at Wallet inside Telegram, right? So also important to mention, to highlight that there is an independent team behind at Wallet. Uh, so they basically started out building inside the Tone ecosystem. And what is very cool about Wallet is that uh, people can already see it natively integrated into the interface of Telegram, right? So you just open uh, settings, um, you can see the wallet there if the wallet uh, has already been rolled out in your region. Right, this, this uh, specifically concerns like the African region, Southeast Asia, probably they already touched Europe as well. I'm, I'm not pretty sure. So like every region except for, for the US um, is definitely on the roadmap. So the wallet will continue to be rolled out in, in this uh, different world region. So what it basically means that people can see the wallet in settings, they can see it in the attachments when they send a message to their friend and they can just in one click uh, send some crypto to their family and friends. And this is really, really impressive. Just believe me, uh, if you see any person that has not touched crypto uh, anytime before, this is like really the window of opportunity. And so uh, we have, we as ecosystem, I mean, have at wallet, and then we have all those amazing and talented developers that are building Telegram mini apps as another layer um, in this uh, pyramid, let's say, um, which is, definitely uh, an amazing combination. So you have a decentralized application, you have the wallet, and then you have the user um, and you just connect the dots and uh, well, ultimately achieve uh, mass adoption, of course. And about the mini apps, I feel like this has, I've started to hear more and more about the Tenton mini apps um, and Telegram mini apps, uh, separate entities. Um, but more so what I wanted to understand was that when did, this become, I guess, a strategy for Ton, and how are you guys approaching this exactly? Um, that's a good question. So definitely, all the main uh, decentralized applications on Ton they started as web apps, just as in any other ecosystem, right? So take our DEXs like Stonefy, DDoS, um, take our lending protocol Eva. They all started just as ordinary web apps. Definitely with this idea in mind that they will need to create a Telegram mini app as well. I would say probably the appearance of first Telegram mini apps started like last summer, I believe. Definitely there were Telegram mini apps before that as well. But just like intrinsically Web3 apps started to, to turn up, uh, I bet last summer, we, we, we will need to check, but th this, is, this is my assumption. And so then after the announcement, of course, after September of last year, um, the, there was this rising trend of launching Telegram mini apps. And just to give you an example, our uh, major perp decks, uh, Storm Trade, they started with the Telegram mini app from, from the very scratch. Uh, so they already adopted that strategy just because, you know, to leverage the potential and to build um, a DeFi product for, for the mass, uh, mass user, mass audience. Uh, and now this narrative is really on the hype, of course, especially with the tap to earn narrative that I think we will definitely need to cover during this podcast, right? And then all the other use cases, just because uh, it's basically a WeChat uh, replicated on, on the Web3 Rails. And this is this is something very exciting. Yeah, totally. Um, since you mentioned Tapturn, like, let's dive into it. Um, like, from a high level, it seems to be just, like, an easy way to onboard or to put tokens in users' hands, but maybe there's more there. Like, 
explain the phenomenon, maybe explain some interesting apps in the space and, and how de- developers are kind of like using this new primitive to, to drive adoption and drive, drive eyeballs to their apps. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, you're absolutely right. It is a very simple onboarding tool for for the masses to start, you know, touching crypto in some way. But then for me personally, how it all started. So I basically joined Ton Foundation not long ago, like half a year ago, like last November, probably more than half a year. We'll need to count. Uh, but so one of my first meetings was indeed with Sasha, who is the founder of NotCoin. And they had like this small this mini ecosystem of apps on Ton from the very beginning. They are one of the first teams to have joined the ecosystem in general. So they had Ton Starter, which is uh, one of the launch pads on Ton. They had Community Bot, which is a quest platform. Really, like it has been number one platform for, for a long time. And then Notcoin. And so when we were on, on that first, very first call with Sasha, uh, he mentioned Notcoin as, you know, just a game where you basically tap on a coin. And before that, we discussed, you know, so advanced things, um, so so exciting stuff for me, especially at the beginning. And then it was like, really, why are you bringing it up at all? Like, people will just what need to tap on a coin. Like, what's the what's the essence of it? And he basically announced um, the game just a few weeks ago, uh, b- before our call at Gate at Ton Gateway in Dubai. And I, I was basically following that stream on YouTube because, because I was not part of Tom Foundation at that moment. And I was like, okay, but th- this sounds very silly. Like, guys, I, I was serious about it. And then can you, can you imagine my reaction in like January uh, when that app started to gain, I'm, I mean, like millions of people every single day? That was really a phenomenon, right? So they, they knew how to create this very... Uh, engaging narrative, very, very special, very interesting. Um, this progression in the game, you're not just clicking, right? You're competing as squads and then you're completing all these uh, easy but still very interesting tasks. So people started to learn what NFTs are all about. They started to buy the first Jetons. Uh, Jetons are uh, the standard of tokens uh, for, uh, like, I mean, on on, on Ton Chain. So um, that was that was really like I mean a completely new story, right? And then definitely a lot of expectations, a lot of speculation around the TG and listing, and it all went very well, I must say. And so now, if we take the stats, so thirty five million people played Notcoin in general overall, right? After the end of the mining phase, the number stood at that point and then 11 million people even more i think 11 uh, million half something like that they claimed not quite on their wallets either self-custody wallets or uh, just just help them on, on their uh, exchanges account right and then 2.3 million people uh, are now holders of not on chain holders right which makes not absolutely number one uh, meme coin in the web three space for the number of holders i think this is an amazing achievement just because i mean if we even focus specifically on those on-chain holders people are not selling they see long-term value here they know that the team will be developing more interesting and exciting stuff in the web three in general um and this is i mean this is just crazy like these are crazy numbers uh, but then now, when we have games with even even larger audiences like Hamster Combat, right, that broke uh, 150 million total users just a couple of days ago, or like Tap Swap with I think 50 million, or YesCoin with 20 million, or Bloom, which is by the way not just a tap to earn, uh, that team is building a, a hybrid exchange. Right, uh, with cross-chain swaps uh, and potentially with a perp tax as well, like with a lot of stuff with a very advanced roadmap, generally speaking. But they decided to adopt this tap to earn approach at the very beginning. And I personally believe this is a very right strategy, just because judging from the experience of other teams, it is evident that it's much easier to onboard masses into something very simple, you know, very community-based as well, just because you're playing with your friends, you're sharing, you're discussing, you're just having fun. And then to give them something more, you know, long-term, some something more sustainable in terms of the value. And this is something that we definitely expect from all those teams. And we're always there for them to, to help them with the roadmaps, uh, just to make sure that this is not just a short-term trend that is going to, you know, fade away in a few months, 
But yes, okay, we did onboard this uh, amazing number of people, but then we need to definitely do something with them, right? So that's on them, on the teams, and definitely on us as as their main, let's say, supporters in terms of, you know, just creating something sustainable. Yeah, that that's kind of where I was going to go next. Like when I when I think of tap to earn, like the first thing I think of is like move to earn, which like it was like this cool, like new game that everyone was really excited about. But the teams that were executing on move to earn, um, they it, it was not sustainable for them. They, they didn't figure out uh, new bells and whistles to kind of keep those projects going. So could you maybe speak to like some like next steps for some of these tap to earn games? Like what are what what are what are the next steps to to like deepen user pen- penetration? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I mean, uh, to my mind, there are so many strategies out there. So once again, going back to the example of Bloom, the guys are building an exchange, right? This is definitely something still to see how exactly they will make these people stay. So now I think more than 20 or more, maybe 30 million people are, um, they, they need to like collect snowflakes or flowers inside the game. So it's not just clicking, but it's something already, you know, more advanced. And actually, I mean, interesting stuff is that people are becoming more and more creative, which is definitely something we expect. So you're not only tapping on the coin anymore. You're tapping on, I don't know, uh, a glass of wine or I don't know, pizza or something like that. Right. So it's anyway, it's even more more interesting now. But once again, going back to the general thesis, um, the Bloom team, they will need to onboard these people into something more complex, into basically DeFi or CeFi, whatever, just at the intersection of it, right? So this is this is one strategy. Okay, you onboard people for something simple, but then you need to educate them on how to use more complex DeFi tools and you know how to become an advanced Web3 user uh, in, the, in the main sense of it, right? Another strategy just as for like Notcoin, they have become the go-to quest platform as well, right? Uh, for, for any Web2 or Web3 brand right now. So uh, people still using, I mean, companies uh, keep using Notcoin as the platform where they can publish some simple tasks and onboard people into their products. And then that's on their shoulders to show them once again, um, what exactly they're offering and uh, creating these tools and how to retain the user, right? So Notcoin basically works with with large and medium companies um, as the platform with a lot of traffic, right? Another another example is Catizen, um, also a very successful game right now. And it's not only tap to earn, uh, you basically breed cats. And this is very, very exciting. And this is an amazing case how uh, a, an Asian team has managed to onboard people from Europe and from the CIS region because you know that Asian games they're very specific and they are usually focused on Asian type type of client type of user. Those guys, I mean, they completely broke the narrative. And so, what is exciting is that uh, and they ha- have experience in launching Telegram mini apps in WeChat. Uh, sorry, mini apps in WeChat. That's just you know a sad phrase in my mind already. Uh, WeChat, uh, which is basically. Um, a paragon for us, right? As a super app in Asia. And so those guys, they, they want to build more games with more interesting and engaging gameplay. And then they want to build like uh, a trading board or an exchange. And then they want to build a quest platform as well. So it really, it, it's really all about the roadmap and its complexity and its relevance, right? Um, people just need to understand what to do with those users. And uh, I'm pretty sure that will manage it. Like once again, take the example of uh, WeChat. It's still there and still like um, one one billion or even more people are playing those uh, mini, mini games and using mini apps on a daily basis. Yeah, I would love to talk about the, those similarities and, and maybe even differences between Telegram and WeChat. Um, you know, if you look at like a lot of market commentary, regarding Toncoin specifically, and then obviously the ecosystem at large, um, everyone talks about just that distribution relationship first. And a big part of the Telegram story is kind of like this North Star of creating an in-app platform, uh, a a rich ecosystem similar to WeChat. Could you maybe speak to um, the similarities and differences of like Telegram and WeChat as you see them? And then like, 
I don't know if there's anything unique that Tan adds to that relationship with Telegram. Yeah, I mean, I would say the main similarity here is definitely the concept itself, that you have everything in like one single interface, right? You don't need to leave the messenger. You have everything there, like your friends, you can chat with them, you can buy goods, um, order a delivery uh, for pizza for, I don't know, a party. Um, you can, for example, pay for your VPN or um, eSIM, whatever, just you play games, um, you interact with people, you discover news, everything in one single place. Um, that, that's the similarity. The difference is that we're building it on, on the Web3 engine, right? Which means definitely decentralization, all this philo philosophy that, that follows, and then people really have the ownership um, of goods, um, so er everything that, you know, all, all the Web3 narratives that are out there and that we all care so much about just because we, we've chosen this path to be to be in Web3, right? So um, this is the, the idea that Pavel, I think, um, has, has, has had with him uh, for the entire period of existence of Telegram and his previous projects as well. Um, this is the main philosophy of the messenger and I think it's become... Uh, pretty clear to everyone, and especially after uh, his recent interview uh, that he's given. So um, I hope that people see that this is this is true, and that this is somewhere that where we're headed. Yeah, totally. And an another like pretty pretty obvious um, kind of angle on Tan, I think, is gaming, right? Like if you were to look at like the history of gaming monetization, you'd see that almost all the growth over the last five or more years is attributable to mobile, right? Uh, people playing games on their phone. You guys obviously have that unique distribution there. Um, outside of tap to earn, are you guys seeing any developers focused on like, uh, on gaming applications within the, the Ton mini app space? No, 100%. This is one of the strongest verticals. I think like most, most developers inside the Ton ecosystem are really focused on GameFi uh, now. And we keep repeating it that once again, like one third of uh, the users of WeChat play games, right? And this is this is an immense uh, amount of people. So we definitely want to target this vertical as well. Um, so apart from Tap to Earn, which literally appeared like what, a few months ago. And then before that, there were uh, all these amazing games uh, inside Telegram on Ton that were already there and people already started familiarizing themselves with them. So um, I would probably name some examples and then if uh, if your listeners are interested, they can just go and check out the games, right? So there is a game called Gatto where you basically breed and grow your Gattomon. Um, yeah, Gatto is a cat in, it in, in Italian, by the way, so... I was always wondering whether there is this direct connection, but this is, you know, all those uh, Tamagotchi inspired games. Um, so people are going crazy about them. They keep on buying NFTs, um, uh, buying different features inside the game to to make their Gatomon uh, more cool and more experienced and more successful in different uh, PvP battles that are available inside the game. They have a very loyal community. That's a mid core game. They don't have, you know, all those hundreds of millions of players yet, uh, but they're just targeting um, a different segment of, of audience. Uh, but I believe that this is a very successful case. Uh, they also had a pretty successful experience in VK before. Uh, VK is uh, a social, social platform for the CIS region. Um, you may have heard of it. So um, this is just to say that people are interested in migrating successful cases to Telegram during this period. And this is amazing. And this is something that we're like heavily supporting in this period. Um, apart from them, um, there is also a very um, entertaining game called the Pixels. So you all know about the Pixels battle, right? And all these uh, various versions that have been launched out there in the market, like both Web2 and Web3. So in this particular game, people needed to draw pixels on the canvas but they needed to do it um, in communities in groups right so you you enter the game you join some community and you basically um, draw these pixels all together um, the game lasted for 10 weeks only now it's over um, 
And at the end of each week, a snapshot of the canvas was taken. And so if you were not on that canvas, you lose, right? And uh, that was very exciting. And people were really crazy about it. They were literally drawing pixels every single day. They were discussing it in chats. They have, they still have a very vivid community. And that talented team, they definitely want to continue like launching new games and then launching the seasons of the pixels battle every, every once in a while. I'm not sure about the regularity yet. Um, but so this is to highlight that um, a successful game in, in Telegram and Onton definitely needs to have such intrinsic elements as social fi, as the in involvement of communities, because Telegram is all about communication and communities, of course, like channels and chats, sharing features. This is something very cool. Uh, just imagine you get a message from your friend and that's a very beautiful intro message with a button uh, probably even some, I don't know, GIF or like some interactive element. And then you just click and you access the game and you start playing. Probably you were invited to take part in a tournament or in a battle in a PvP with your friend. Um, so once again, this is all about, you know, like sharing and involving more and more people so that these apps, they really become viral and uh, which, which definitely eliminates the need to heavily invest in marketing just because it's very, very organic growth. And definitely rewards. Like everyone loves points um, in crypto at this at this at this stage, right? So um, airdrops, um, raffles, uh, everything uh, is is true for for Ton as well, of course. So um, it's all about referral programs and then just farming points. Uh, one more exciting case for me is uh, Gamey. That's um, a portfolio company of Animoca Brands, right? And um, they, they've been developing their gaming platform inside Telegram for for many years already, if I'm not mistaken, since like 2019 or we'll, we'll need to check, but something approximately from there. And so um, they are now, they've launched a new narrative um, uh, preparing for, for the launch of their token on Ton, um, which we hope will, will come soon. So there is a new farming campaign um, in, in the gaming platform. Um, so you just basically perform very basic tasks and then you play the games because gaming is intrinsically a publisher, right? So they have more than 70 very cool, hyper casual games in, in, in this platform. So you just get involved in all those games while, I don't know, uh, being in public transport, going to work or uh, to university. And then you just farm these points. You can also farm points through staking different assets uh, on Ethereum, by the way, which is a very interesting case for me specifically in terms of how the team will manage to onboard people from the Ethereum community to Ton. Because, um, I mean, once again, the launch will be on Ton. But now, if, for example, you stake uh, your Pudgy Penguins um, for, for, for a certain period, you farm points, and then those points are going to be converted into something uh, valuable on Ton. Right, so this is a very exciting case for me as well. So um, I hope it helps uh, in terms of understanding that tap to earn is not the only thing, and this is more of a you know very temporary and very um, I mean initial stage, and then some something more valuable and more advanced uh, needs to follow. Of course. Yeah, that makes sense. I um I actually want to ask about gaming, but maybe not. I'm not sure how uh, related it is, but. There's been a few games that have launched natively in Telegram, but as far as I understand, they're not on ton. So Blast had a game called, uh, it was related to Samurai. So it was like Sushi Samurai, and it was native like in Telegram. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's a plan for ton to not rent seek, but try and accrue some value off of non uh, ton based games or applications that want to launch on Telegram. And I think I'm like, I also want to ask about. Um, trading bots related to this as well, but just kind of in general, how you guys think of apps that are on Telegram, but not on Ton. Telegram is open to anyone. So any developer can come launch a Telegram mini app, whether it's a Web2 app or a Web3 app, whether on Ton on, or any other chain, right? So we definitely talk with a lot of developers who are building Telegram mini apps and using other chains. Um, and they all show interest. So this is to taunt, towards Ton, I mean. So this is to say that we're not gonna, you know, like uh, hunt them or uh, in any way, I don't know, block their activity. Of course not. This is absolutely against our principles and our strategy, right? We're just 
you know, calmly waiting until they show interest themselves. If they do, we're very happy to support them, to show them the opportunities. And I must say, this is something that's already happening just because, I mean, we we definitely attend a lot of conferences and we see how, for example, th- there was one guy at an Animoca brand uh, portfolio day. Uh, so they're building a Telegram mini app, a game on Sui. And then um, he was like, he was so excited about Sui, uh, telling me that probably Ton will be a next step, but he was not sure. And then just a week after that, probably after some major announcement about Ton or something, I don't remember in which period it was exactly, but he was like, Elena, you know, we just decided to to migrate the app completely to Ton. And I'm like, welcome guys. We are very, very happy to have you. So th- this just happens, you know, organically. We don't even need to, to pitch it anymore just because people see the potential. And this is something that we really appreciate just because um, there is a certain type of teams that are just, you know, hunting different like grants or like financial opportunities in, in different ecosystems. That's their choice. That's their approach. Uh, but we, we just love, we very appreciate when builders really see why it should be torn, at least during this period, at least to start, because definitely the future must be, you know, um, multi-chain, omni-chain, whatever. Uh, but just as a starting point as and, you know, as an opportunity to to leverage something that's happening inside the Ton ecosystem, this is probably something to to look at. That makes sense. And one thing is that I assume like a lot of people are interested in the, the distribution channel that Ton um, can provide. But how do you guys view this? Like 900 mil uh, monthly active users is a huge number. Um, but I'm wondering like how much of that is converted or like that you guys are looking to convert. And my second question is that, for example, Ethereum values itself as having, well, maybe not values itself, but it has like a limited amount of users with a lot of capital. And Solana has a lot of users um, on paper, just as Ethereum has a lot of users on paper, but with less capital. And how, like, what is the ton approach here? Do you, 900 million users, okay, but how much capital do you think can come on chain? And how do you guys like view that? Yeah, I think, you know, we want to adopt a very balanced approach here because for an ecosystem that's still early, um, some people recommend focusing on the number of users, first of all, right, which means that definitely growing the retail part. Uh, but then for us, it's probably both. And I think we've already achieved uh, some very good milestones here. So, for example, the TVL has grown like a monthly uh, by more than um, two thousand percent recently, if we count in dollars, right? So we 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 we've broken um, six hundred uh, million already on, on our bay to, to to one bill, hopefully soon, right? And talking about users, our aim is to onboard uh, five hundred million people on chain by two thousand twenty-eight. Um, here we will probably count not only like purely on-chain users with self-custody wallets, but those with, for example, in-game balances or um, someone that, I don't know, holds any Ton-related assets on their centralized exchange accounts. So th- this is um, just a matter of methodology. Uh, but I believe it, it really should be both. Definitely given the, the large uh, number of people inside Telegram, like 900 million, um, we, we are probably more about onboarding retail and um, the, the main effort now is to really bring this wide range of use cases, interesting use cases that will help us do it, right? So thanks to the amazing work of our developers, of, of the teams, we have a lot of interesting cases regarding payments, utilities, social fines, so on and so forth. And so me personally, uh, I've just been to a series of our uh, boot camps within the Open League initiative. Um, yeah, by the way, remind me, I, I really need to tell you about the Open League, which is something very exciting that we're doing right now. And so I've been to those boot camps and I can see really how, you know, our vision resonates with the vision of builders as well, just because they are looking in the very right direction. Um, in, in Telegram, we need to, first of all, think about the Telegram user, uh, their daily habits and, you know, the convenience that the messenger offers intrinsically and then come up with different interesting use cases and additional functionality on top of what Telegram already offers as the, I don't know, communication channel, as the channel to read news and get information. Uh, if if the developer manages to find this interesting uh, 
um, use case, then that's the, the first sign of success. Polygon Labs is developing the next generation of open source ZK tech to aggregate crypto liquidity and user bases, empowering developers to grow in a unified web of interoperable chains with the ag layer. The ag layer is a machine for network effects. Don't worry about bootstrapping liquidity, just build anywhere in the ag layer to tap the liquidity and users everywhere. To support the aggregated future and bootstrap quality projects, the Polygon Community Grants program was launched with 1 billion tokens, all for Polygon builders. Season 1 of the Community Grants program is live right now and features 35 million in Matic to support the next generation of Polygon projects. For builders on Polygon or projects interested in migrating, these grants are for you. Join the aggregated future and feel empowered to grow in an infinite web of unified, interoperable chains. Apply today at polygon.technology slash grants. Pair is an innovative pair trading exchange built on top of Simio. Users can trade trending narratives with one click from blue chip narratives such as long BTC, short ETH, right to the whiff versus bonk. The hat stays on. Simio's intense centric architecture enables deep liquidity, source off chain, and broad on chain. And combined with Pair, has democratized access to complex trading strategies typically reserved for institutional traders. The age of interoperability is here. With the launch of Teleporter, Avalanche becomes a seamlessly linked network of many sovereign blockchains that communicate so smoothly, they feel like a single chain. Teleporter is an EVM-compatible cross-chain communication protocol built on top of Avalanche for Message. It allows any EVM chain on Avalanche to send messages, assets, and data to one another in a simple, fast, affordable, and secure way. Teleporter and Avalanche for Messaging provide a new foundation for how Avalanche blockchains can communicate and how developers can easily build cross-chain applications out of the box. Build anything you want, any way you want, on the eco-friendly blockchain designed for web free devs. Check it out by clicking the link below. I actually have one question about SocialFi as well, and then I'm going to pass it on to Ryan to get more technical. But uh, creator tips, uh, tokenized Telegram usernames, and tokenized Telegram stickers is what Pavel Durov talked about uh, at Token2049. And I see like... Because I know there's a lot of countries that use Telegram, not just the way that we use Telegram, or let's say me and Ryan use Telegram. Um, there are countries who use Telegram as their source of news, as like just day-to-day -day life, as opposed to the way that I think most crypto people use it. Do you think that that is the social fight that you're going for, such as like news channels that only exist on Telegram being able to add creator tips and some form of like new income source, or are you going to go for a more crypto native social buy? Um, potentially something like a bit more financialized and not as straightforward. Yeah, I think it's definitely both once again, right? Just because we want to focus on bo both like web to retail user and then crypto people that are already used uh, to using Telegram every single day. Yeah, and actually when I was listening to what uh, Bocaccio were saying, I was like, and what if your life is uh, entirely in, in Telegram? Uh, like, honestly, it's become crazy, like all those chats and like everything's happening there, work, personal life, just whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, SocialFi is a very broad concept and we want to embrace like the entire range of elements that are connected to, to this trend in general. So take, I don't know, friend tech. There's already quite a successful uh, case on Ton uh, that sp basically replicated the functionality of Frantac with all those keys and gated communities, right? And, and works pretty well. Why? Just because it's all in one single place and you can connect your wallet in a single click, right? You don't need to set up a new wallet to deposit funds. I mean, you do need to deposit funds, but it's it's pretty simple uh, because wallet allows you to do it through P2P or with a credit card, right? So uh, like friend tech type of apps. And then we also have like, once again, going back to my experience with the boot camps, um, the guys are very creative these days. For example, there is this new social fi app that uh, wants to allow people to co-invest in positions on, on a perp dex. So just imagine like, I don't know, one KOL, like a trader KOL, uh, they share a link with the community, like guys, let's, I don't know, go, uh, long on ton right now all together and you just click you invest some ton coin and then when the sum reaches a certain level a position gets open right and then it's all automatic through smart contracts no one has the custody of your funds for even for a second um so all the uh all the opportunities of the web3 space are there 
And so it's all very simple and all in one single place. And this distribution channel that uh, you mentioned multiple times is there just because once again, you don't need to see this ad on, on YouTube. You just hear uh, about it from your favorite trader, KOL, or your friend, right? Or people from, from the same chat you're in. So uh, there are also guys that want to give an opportunity to monetize uh, mess messages in chats. Uh, we know that uh, AI models, especially linguistic models, crucially need data, right? Uh, authorized data. And so wh why don't you just approve of your data, of your uh, text messages or voice messages being used um, in order to for you to get rewards, to get some points that are probably going to be converted into a token. And then those companies that need data, they can just uh, come, come and get it, right? Um, so there's also one very exciting use case through which you can basically um, get money for uh, receiving messages on Telegram, which I think is an amazing tool potentially for decision makers, right? Uh, those who just get like, I don't know, thousands of messages every single day, uh, they can just set a price f for a message and then only those people who are ready to pay can, can reach out to them. So all of this, uh, th that's really a mix. But I would say um, all those, you know, very innovative, very fresh cases that once again, add something on top of what Telegram already offers. Um, yeah. And then this, this is a path to, to success to my mind, uh, talking about social fight specifically. That's, that's super interesting. So just to kind of backtrack, you're talking about like a gated messaging service where if there's someone, they're a well-known VC and they don't want to take every email that they get, they can like put out their public telegram address, like, Hey, like this will make it to me if you pay 20 bucks or like, I'll provide you with like career coaching advice. I'll, you know, have a message conversation with you. If you pay like the $50 entrance fee, is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you just access uh, a link and then, yeah, you pay uh, for this service with Toncoin or use the on Ton or potentially any Jetton that the, the team decides to integrate there. Uh, and you can reach out to that person that you need to reach out to. That, yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah. Sorry, Bach, do you want to go? Yeah, I, just, I was just going to say it's really cool. I know like some other project just launched a few days ago doing something similar, but I in general, uh, I'm quite excited about kind of financializing people's times. I know it sounds kind of dystopian, but I feel like it's naturally going to happen just because everybody's online and in the real world, you can't just reach everybody. You need some form of a system. And I think it makes sense to do it online as well. I, I would love to talk about kind of con like their architecture, the this, this systems architecture from like a high level. Um, and in particular, the, the, the um, in context of like the activity that we've seen today. So like, I know you guys yeah, on a test net um, demonstrated uh, a, a TPS record in a constrained environment. I also know that there was some downtime in the past. So like, obviously like system stability is super important for devs. Throughput is super important for devs, especially uh, on a platform that is touting a, like a very high user base. So maybe we could just high level architecture and how, how this thing plans to scale. Yeah, sure. So from, from the high level, I would say like Ton, as you already mentioned correctly, an L1 with the uh, charting technology inherently, right? In, in, inherent in this, in its architecture. And so, um, from the technical standpoint, uh, how Ton stands out, uh, among other blockchains are first of all the speed and then secondly the scalability right so talking about the speed Ryan, you're absolutely right um we broke the record it was last autumn i think like november or something probably october uh yeah for the highest tps that reached like 100,000 transactions per second something like that um this is important to highlight it's, it's important to highlight that was basically conducted in an isolated environment right so that was a test and that i mean never happened in in, in real environment okay and then you're also right about this um situation that appeared in december because of the um inscriptions hype that reached ton as well right it all started with bitcoin uh but then touched other chains as well and i believe that was Kind of a hard and exciting moment for um 
any chain that was involved. I mean, that, that, that was a nice problem to have, right? Um, it was not about like the problem, the, intri- the intrinsic problem of the chain as such, but there was just the unreadiness, I would say, of the infrastructure overall, just because no one saw it coming. And as you know, like before September of last year, Ton was not a narrative yet, right? So there was quite low, relatively low activity on on the chain in general. And so what happened was that um, there was this um, new inscription protocol, and then basically the infra, I mean, indexers and API providers, they were just in the wallets, they were not ready just because no one expected it. And this is why it happened, right? But then we, we started fixing it at once, uh, and it's it's become much, much uh, better right now, especially after the NotCoin launch. And then we're obviously expecting all those large tap to earn projects uh, to launch soon as well. And so that's why we need uh, to make sure the infra is ready uh, to, to, to such a high uh, workload in terms of on-chain transactions, on-chain activity. Uh, definitely those projects, uh, I mean, for like security reasons, just to be on the safe side, they kind of split the traffic. So they, they lead people to centralized exchanges as well, right? And then to to DEXs too, but not Coin, as we know, they balanced it in a way that most of the people, they were uh, mostly engaging with centralized exchanges and then transferring funds to to their self-custody wallets as well. Uh, but I think, I mean, we, we, we su- survived that period quite well regardless of all those problems and but you're absolutely right and there is still a lot to improve and um a lot of people are working on it right now from the side of the core team and from the side of projects uh, that are building inside the ecosystem too is there like there's there's a lot of comms from blockchain teams about like the uh latency they're targeting uh the total throughput that they're targeting like in some future steady state do you guys have uh, an angle on that? Do you guys like want to achieve, you know, n TPS per second, for example, when this thing is like fully functioning, or like how do you guys think about that? Um, I think for like more precise info on that, we should just look up the roadmap on Tondatoric. But what I can say is that uh, we'll probably just you know stick to the record that we've already achieved in terms of TPS. But just make sure that it works not only in the isolated environment, but also in, in like real, real life, right? So when we have this um, this level of demand for for the speed and for the scalability, we are ready to to provide it as as blockchain. I'm thinking about like the um, OK, so like a developer listening to this call right now, like they're interested in the distribution. Uh, they th- see that this, the thing has scale from the block explorer. Um, but now they have to start coding and deploying applications, right? Like, and I look at the ecosystem and I see like, you know, Ethereum historically was able to like minimize like developer onboarding because like Solidity looks like JavaScript, right? And, um, you know, Solana had Rust, which is a very like admired language, um, outside of the crypto industry. So like that was kind of like a natural touch point for the Solana ecosystem. Um, I, I know you guys use fund C, which is, um, I guess a derivative of C and, um, like C it's certainly used, like there are, there are C, there are C programmers out there, no doubt, but it's not one of these like really, really loved languages. Um, I'm wondering how you guys think about like that potential friction in onboarding devs, um, when like, like what's the power of fun C, right? Like you're obviously choosing that for a reason. Like, like, why is that the model? Yeah. So, uh, you're right. That's still a hurdle. And, uh, I mean, onboarding dApps like web three dApps into any new ecosystem is, is kind of, uh, you know, um, a job still to be done. Um, I would say, and also we have another language, uh, which is tact and which is, I mean, easier to, to be onboarded into at first phase, but definitely like the language that offers more possibilities and more like advanced, um, features is fancy indeed. So, uh, fancy, you're absolutely right. is very close to the C family of languages. And then tact is probably, I mean, 
people who code it on like Python or uh, TypeScript will, will find some some similarities as well if they if they want to uh, learn TACT. Uh, TACT is not production ready yet. Um, the team is working on it. But I would say this combination, it helps us onboard people relatively fast to TACT and then give them more possibilities if they start learning fancy. But this is definitely a trade-off just because you, you, you definitely do need to invest time in learning a new language. Uh, but once again, if you want to get that level of distribution and I mean, also all those types of support that we from the side of Tom Foundation do give to developers, um, this is, I mean, your decision, uh, but to, to my mind, it, it's definitely worth it. And uh, we are uh, keeping on improving the documentation, of course. So we have um, several good courses. Uh, we keep on organizing all these boot camps and hackathons where people can come and join different workshops where we in, in real time show them how to code. Uh, we have a lot of uh, very, very lively chats uh, with more than, I think, 18,000 developers already there uh, asking questions, giving feedback. So just working on it as one of the uh, most important, let's say, directions of our work in general, because we understand that, okay, like launching a Telegram mini app on Dawn sounds exciting just because we see all these numbers from tap to earn apps and not only, but uh, how, where, where to start from and how to actually learn a language, that's a different question. But yeah, once again, working on it and making sure that all the tools are available. How do you see the next six to 12 months, what are you guys focusing on over the next year? What is, let's say as a, yeah, open-ended question. What are you guys looking at? Um, yeah, a lot of things. Um, I mean, generally speaking, I would say like my, my team specifically, uh, we are focusing on the Open League, which is a major initiative now. Um, of the Ton ecosystem in general. So this is one of the reasons why the TVL has grown uh, so immensely and why we have a lot of new apps and a lot of new users. So the Open League, just uh, in a nutshell, that's a long-term incentive program uh, within which we already distributed more than $45 million in Ton coin to founders of projects, to users, to even airdrop hunters. Uh, among everyone else. So uh, what it basically means, it consists of several core elements. The first element is the open battle of Ton projects. Um, so imagine you launched an app on Ton uh, and it already has some on-chain activity. So you can join the battle where you will be competing with other Ton projects for large prizes every season, right? So each season lasts two weeks and we are distributing uh, during this season, uh, $1.2 million in Toncoin for just two weeks, right? And those teams that perform well, they get the prizes. And this money goes directly to the team. And they can spend it on marketing, on product development, on an airdrop to their community, just whatever. So this is basically like, I mean, free money, very well deserved, of course, just because we're tracking a lot of metrics. So for apps, this is, for example, the number of transactions, the number of active wallets, right? Just to see how, how they're performing in terms of on-chain. And then we have a token battle where meme coins, by the way, which is also a very interesting narrative on Tor right now, and just uh, ordinary tokens are fighting for prizes as well based on, for example, the price growth or the number of token holders and the TVL indexes and so on and so forth. We also have a separate battle for DeFi projects that are competing for uh, prizes based on the TVL that they managed to bring. And then NFT battle as well for the most vivid and active NFT collections on Ton. So the plan is just to scale this thing, to provide like more prizes, to create more leaderboards, uh, to experiment with the metrics and with the mechanics that we offer. But I would say the projects are really very excited about this thing because uh, I personally have never seen uh, a battle of this type, an open battle where you can just come, you know, build something very fast, uh, bring audience there and get a price and get a lot of marketing support, a lot of PR and promotional uh, assistance as well, just because we are marketing this program very heavily with all our media partners and in our uh, internal, not internal, but I mean, official um, social media channels of Ton, of the Ton ecosystem in general. 
Um, so, I mean, this is very exciting. And if you, for example, go and see the app leaderboard right now, you will see very new projects that have joined just recently. Take YesCoin, take Catizen, uh, Squid TG game. Uh, those are very new contestants that did not take part in season one, two, yeah, one or two. Uh, so, and in the third season, they already ranked top. So this is to say that anyone is very welcome, you know, just to come, build, join and win. That's the narrative. The second element, which is also very cool, and it's probably more appealing to the end users, um, also who are new to Ton, uh, these are the so-called LP boosts that we are providing for uh, pools with tokens on DEXs, right? So those projects that won the battle that I mentioned previously, they get rewards for their liquidity providers on DEXs. So you can just open the website of StoneFi or DDust right now, and you'll see the, the API there in some pools that are basically labeled the open league. On DDust, it's just a lightning symbol. So we are providing TonCoin from, from the side of uh, Ton Foundation and Ton Society, and projects are providing their own token, right? And so these are basically like the classic farming rewards. The end user needs to have Ton and some other token uh, on their balance, I don't know, take, not coin, whatever. Uh, so two token on their balance, they just come to DEX, um, put liquidity there and farm rewards, right? Usually these are only rewards that are coming from the project itself, but here we are sustaining the price of the token of the project through providing uh, ton coin. So this is an amazing thing that it really works because the number of Jaton holders has also increased like greatly. And the projects are very excited about this particular initiative, of course, just because people are now, they, they now have a very uh, evident motivation to buy um, the asset, right? And to also um, interact with the product in the long term, right? So the, the aim of each project that is participating in the program right now is to create this like long-term and sustainable mechanics inside their product so that people after the farming ends uh, do not just sell the token, right? But they just uh, keep on using it within the product and become like a part of the loyal community of this particular project, which is, I mean, super, super exciting. Um, a lot of stuff. So the Open League is definitely one of the core parts we are focusing on. And uh, we've just finished uh, accepting applications for the Open League Hackathon as well. So here we're actually very very close to Solana already in terms of the number of applications. So we've got more than 1,000 um, submissions this time, which is a de definitely a record for us. And we'll be distributing a prize pool of uh, two, uh, $2 million uh, for the win winners. Um, yeah, so uh, we will now be reviewing all these applications. So I'm super excited about it personally, just because I saw the quality of teams during the boot camps that were indeed organized. Uh, as a support to, to the overall hackathon. Um, so we will definitely continue in this regard as well, just because, as I mentioned, it's important to, um, to show the developers, the founders, their perspective from the very beginning. And definitely those teams that are participating in, the, in hackathons, they are still very early and they need a lot of guidance and a lot of you know, assistance and necessary tools and programs. And then just the last thing to mention, definitely continuing to work with our dear partners, let's say. So, I mean, in terms of strategic partnership, like Telegram and Tether, um, and then Animoco Brands as well, uh, collaborating very tightly with them on m many different realms, um, like Fireblocks and many other partners that are uh, interested in the ecosystem that are, are really um, looking to build something very long term with us, um, yeah, very very excited about that part as well. Just because obviously, without partners, we we cannot just you know work in isolation. It's all about synergies um, in Web three in general. Yeah, that that's great color. Um, you you mentioned these these big partners and these apps that have attracted a certain amount of users. Like future developers, like okay, so maybe I'll backtrack a little bit. Crypto has like a civil problem. When airdrops happen, when reward programs happen, uh, users will naturally try to game that system. And given like the like semi-anonymous nature of crypto rails, like 
they they take that shot on goal right um like Katizen, for example they're they're touting very large user numbers that um i think like a skeptical dev um is gonna like maybe balk at or question so like is there anything about the telegram or ton platform that can assure like new devs coming into the ecosystem that like there are monetizable users here today it's not like flooded with civils you like you saw the layer zero airdrop for example and the work that brian did and that he made public like what's going on in ton where they can assure new devs coming to the ecosystem that like that's not going to be a problem for them yeah uh this is definitely i mean a problem that we're facing as well probably not um not really at the scale but not in the same um mode that for example layer zero or zk sync or scroll or whatever other uh, new um l2 or new ecosystem is facing right now um but so the, here we're talking about the software and sibyls right they're basically uh farming uh the future airdrop for us it's more about bots that are also farming those points inside Telegram mini apps and I would say that um, teams, uh, th those successful teams, they already started collaborating with different analytic partners. Uh, just for example, uh, I mean, Nomis, that's the team that uh, has recently joined the ecosystem. They're building their like uh, on-chain scoring mechanism uh, that will definitely help um, avoid, um, you know, giving rewards to, to Sybils. Um, so, and more and more partners are basically coming and joining the ecosystem, I would say for now, it's also on the shoulders of each team. And for example, Notcoin, I know that they definitely removed a lot of uh, inactive wallets uh, from the uh, final distribution, of course. I'm not sure about the number, but I think something around a million for sure. So out of 35 mil, uh, which is kind of a decent number. And then Bloom, for example, they also has, they also have like, a dedicated framework for it. I remember there is a, a video on YouTube explaining that. So every team, of, of course, like those huge numbers are cool, right? Everyone that sees it, it's like a wow effect from uh, from the first glance. But definitely if you like dive deeper, you understand that there are bots there and you're just wondering how many of those 150 million users are actually real. Um, well, I can assure you that a very substantial part, just because I literally see people um, all across, like even Europe, playing this hamster combat. I'm, I'm really, you know, it's it just driving me crazy. All my family is playing, all my friends are playing. This is crazy. So this is definitely a sign of uh, the game becoming really viral uh, among real people. But the, the problem still persists. I totally agree here. And so, yes, as I was saying, it's all on the shoulders of each team, but we from the side of Tom Foundation will definitely continue, you know, collaborating with different partners in this particular direction so that they can offer their services as well. So whether a team wants to uh, perform an airdrop, they can make sure that there is tooling inside the ecosystem that can analyze Tom wallets specifically and make sure that uh, only real people or almost uh, real people get get the um, well deserved rewards at the end of the day. Yeah, that would, I think it's like very difficult to understand who's real and who's not as well. And I think like a lot of people put um, unnecessary blame on teams sometimes because they're like, oh, active addresses versus active users. This has just been a thing over the past week, which is why I wanted to bring it up. Is like I see a no, lot. Of actually, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel those teams very much. I mean, a lot of criticism, a lot of complaints. But once again, my, my personal thesis here is that this is anyway free money for you guys. Why are you always complaining, right? So you're you're being rewarded. Like, I mean, I understand that like everyone has their own vision, their own view of how their words need, need to be distributed. But it's that's just life. I mean, we just, okay, once again, we just need to have fun. And all those games, at least, they, they give you fun and entertainment, okay? You're either you're clicking on a hamster or opening these cards inside the game or finding this day's combo, whatever. It just needs to give you joy and delight. 
And this is all about those Telegram mini apps that are now being launched, right? So once again, my personal recommendation here is not to expect anything. And that's why I really enjoyed the narrative of NotCoin, right? It was probably nothing. Like no yeah. expectations, no guarantees. You can just have fun. You come and play with your friends. You read our posts. You engage with us in the chat. Um, we are going to provide a lot of, uh, you know, fun gifts and um, memes, whatever. But it's probably nothing. So no, of course, financial expectations here uh, should be posed just because it, that's a game. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you have anything that you'd like to leave our uh, listeners with? Any parting thoughts? Well, guys, what, what can I say? Come to Ton. We have a lot to offer. Um, I'm personally very, very excited. And also, when I was to make this decision of where to go half a year ago, um, after you know exploring all those amazing ecosystems out there, um, I made my decision and I never ever wish to, to to change it just because uh, it's an amazing ecosystem with fantastic opportunities with a lot of programs for for builders and founders so the open league once again uh, come and build and join the competition we're going to continue for the months to come so you still have time um, so we have um, a lot of other supportive programs like the grant program we offer marketing support like business development support um, what else for the users it's also still early and people should come and explore all the opportunities just have a look at our dexes at stone find d dust and you'll find all those amazing numbers there um, so if you've been in in web3 for a while you will understand that this is definitely a place to be right now and then yeah i mean we're just we're very open and uh, really have a lot of plans and a lot of ambitions in the web3 space so uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm sure we, we're going to have many more conversations about Dawn in the near future. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, guys. That was a pleasure. Are you currently building on Polygon or interested in migrating? Season one of the Polygon Community Grants program is live right now and features 35 million in Matic to support the next generation of Polygon projects. Builders on Polygon, these grants are for you. Join the aggregated future today by applying at polygon.technology slash friends.